all about cables under concentrated loads. It burrows quite a bit from trusses using the method of sections and the method of joints. So if you like trusses, then you're in luck. And if you didn't like trusses, then maybe you just haven't met the right truss yet? Anyway, when you've got a cable and you hang it under its self-weight, you end up with a curved shape like this ribbon. But as soon as you put a concentrated load on that cable, it forms straight lines between the concentrated loads. The overall cable system is always in equilibrium. That means that if you take the sum of the forces in the x direction or in the y direction, it will always equal zero. There's also no net moment on the cable system. So you can take the moment about any point on your cable system and it will equal zero. Then, just like with trusses, you can cut a section and you'll have equilibrium there too either with moments or your forces in the x and y direction. You can also look at just one joint at a time where you'll have the equilibrium of the x and the y direction having no net forces. Okay, let's see these factoids in action to solve a problem. Here we have a cable hung from points A and B, which are at the same elevation. There are two point loads being applied. 10 kilonewtons at point B and 25 kilonewtons at point C. We want to know the dimension YB and what the maximum tension in the cable is. For all statics problems, we want to identify what we know and use that to help us find what we don't know. It's usually easiest to start by looking at the overall equilibrium of our system. And we do that by drawing our free body diagram. So when you have a cable under a load, you have two reactions at each end. They have to hold it up and they have to keep it from pulling in on itself. So our reactions go in the up direction and in opposite directions on either end for the X. I like to draw the forces in the direction they act on the system. If you end up guessing the wrong direction, it's not a big deal. It just means that when you solve your equations, you may end up with a negative number. That means your force should actually be going in the other direction. So for overall equilibrium, all of our forces in the x and y direction will each sum to zero. It's helpful to number our equations as we go for easy reference later. We also have no net moment, which gives us a third equation. We could take a moment about any point and we would get zero. But we want to be smart and think before we equate. For example, if we were to take the moment about point B, we would have to consider the unknown forces at joint D and at joint A. Instead, we could take the moment about point A. That way, we don't have to consider AY or AX. We also don't have to consider dx because the line of action of dx is in line with joint A. So if you were to be pivoted at A and pull in the direction of dx, you would just end up translating your whole shape. But we have to consider dy still because if you're pivoted at A and you pull up at dy, your whole shape is going to rotate. Okay, let's find the moment about A. Our positive direction is anything that's going to make it rotate this way. So we have a force of 10 kilonewtons times a moment arm of 1 meter, which is making it rotate in the negative direction. So negative 10 times 1. Then we have 25 kilonewtons in the same direction at a distance of 1 plus 4 meters. And last, we have dy acting at a distance of 6.5 meters. And that one is in the positive direction. And it will equal 0. 
Now we have one equation with one unknown. So we can solve for dy. And we get that dy is equal to 20.77 kilonewtons. And I always like to put boxes around our answers so it's easy to identify what we've already solved for. Now let's look at everything we've got. From equation three, we solved for dy, which means we can take that and plug it into equation one. Ay is now our only unknown in equation one, so we can solve and box it up. Ay equals 14.23 kilonewtons. This is what we've got after looking at our overall equilibrium. There's still not enough information to help us find YB or our max tension. So we've got to start cutting sections or looking at joints one by one. Where do we start? Well, at joint A, we know one of our reactions, but we don't know the geometry coming off that joint. YB is missing. And at joint C and D, we know the forces coming downward, but we don't know either of the tension forces coming off them. At joint D, we know one of the reactions, and we also have a set geometry that we were given. So since we know the most about joint D, we're gonna start there. Here's joint D zoomed in. And spoiler alert, we're gonna do this joint twice. Not because I love to torture you, but because some of you are gonna prefer the first method and some of you will prefer the second method. Okay, so our free body diagram of joint D. We have the tension coming from the cables between joints C and D, and we call it TCD. It pulls away from the joint, and the angle that that tension makes is the same angle that that cable makes from geometry, because the cable can only take load along its axis. So the angle with the horizontal is called theta CD, and it can be solved for using the geometry we were given. So theta CD is equal to the arctan of the opposite length over the adjacent length, which will give us an angle of 63.43 degrees. Okay, now from equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. So dy has to be equal to the downward component of our force TCD. And since TCD is the hypotenuse of our triangle, we can solve for the vertical component by taking the sine of theta CD. And we said that that is equal to our force dy. And since we know theta CD and we know dy, we can solve for the tension and we find out that it is equal to 23.22 kilonewtons. Now let's look at our equilibrium in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be equal to zero. That means that dx is going to be equal to the x component of TCD. And from geometry, we know that that would be equal to TCD times the cosine of our theta CD. Then we can equate that to dx. And since we've already solved for TCD and theta CD, we can find our dx. So when you plug in your values, you get that dx is equal to 10.39 kilonewtons. Okay, now we're gonna do that same joint all over again, but a little different. This time we're gonna think a few steps ahead of our calculations. 
So from force equilibrium, we know that the x component of TCD will have to match dx, and the y component of TCD will have to match dy. That means that if you were to do vector addition of dx plus dy, you would have to get something exactly equal and opposite to TCD, right down to the angle that that force makes with the horizontal. So since they're equal, that means that the tangent of this angle has to equal the tangent of this angle. So looking up here, the tangent of theta CD would be equal to dy over dx, which is 20.77 over dx. And the tangent of this angle from geometry is equal to 3 over 1.5. We can use that to solve for dx directly, which gives us the same as last time, 10.39 kilonewtons. Then, since we know our dx and our dy are equal to our x and y components of TCD, we can use Pythagoras to solve for TCD. That means that dx squared plus dy squared would be equal to tcd squared. You can solve that to get the same thing that we got last time, which was 23.22 kilonewtons. Okay, now that we've solved joint D twice, let's take a step back and look at the big picture again. This is everything we've done so far. With the dx we just solved for, we can go back to equation 2 and solve for ax. Plugging in our value for dx shows us that ax has the same value in the opposite direction to match our free body diagram. Now that we know ax and ay, we can go to joint A and do the same thing we did at joint D. This time it will help us find yb. At joint A, we're going to do the same thing that we did at joint D. We know from force equilibrium that if we do vector addition of AX and AY, it has to equal something that is exactly equal and opposite to the tension from TAB. Exactly the same including the angle that it makes with the horizontal, theta AB. So the tangent of this angle has to equal the tangent of this angle. And the tangent of this theta AB would be equal to your opposite height, which is AY, over your horizontal, which is AX. And that has to equal your opposite over adjacent for your bottom angle. Now you can solve for your yb directly, which gives you a yp of 1.37 meters. And you can solve for your tab by doing Pythagoras again from your ax and your ay. That gives you a tab of 17.6 two kilonewtons. And you can take your arctan of this ratio to help you solve for your theta. So your theta AB is equal to 53.86 degrees. The problem asked us to find YB and the maximum tension. We've already found YB, but we've only found two tensions in the cable so far. We could keep going from our joint calculations and solve for all our tension forces to see which one is the largest. Or we could be a little lazy. I prefer to be a little lazy. Geometry is our friend. Take a look at our cable. At each end, the reaction forces in the x direction are the same. At joint A and 
D, we saw that the X component of our tension also had to match the magnitude of those X reaction forces. And we see that at joints B and C, there are no other forces being applied in the X direction. So for X forces to be in equilibrium, the X component of both our tension forces going in and out of all our joints must be the same as our reaction forces AX and DX. So since the geometry of each cable section is different, but the X component of their tension values is the same, that means the steeper the angle is, the larger the overall tension force must be. Think of it like a step on a staircase. All the stairs are the same length, but if they get steeper, then they must also get higher to cover the same distance. So bigger angle equals bigger tension. We have all the geometry info to solve for theta BC which means that we can see our steepest angle is theta CD. That means that our maximum tension will be TCD, which is 23.22 kilonewtons. Really, there was no need for us to solve for TAB when we were doing the question. We could have just waited to see what all our angles were, and that would have told us which tension force our maximum would be. That was a wild ride of a problem, so here's the whole thing step by step. In the next video, we'll go through some more examples with a bit more speed. Remember to practice practice. See you next time!